Welcome back, guys. I have uh, something a little different for you guys today. The oldest hat shops in America. Let's talk about that. The very first one was Henry the Hatter. Okay, 1883. Wow, 128. What is that? Yeah, it's really old. All right, um, after that, Meyer the Hatter, 1894. Okay, so you've got Henry the Hatter was the very first one in Detroit, Michigan. 1883, and he's still around. Myra the Hatter in New Orleans, he's right in the French Quarter, in the big area there. He's there, um, 1894, okay? The third one's in Ohio, in Cincinnati. But Saki's Hat Shop, ooh, okay. It survived two world wars, a depression, several years, okay, this and that. It's a Greek owner, he's age 89 now, he's 91 now, I guess. Um, wow, yeah, he's... Probably almost 92. Okay, that's in Cincinnati, the, um, 1907. Okay, number four is Shud Brothers in Brookshire, Texas. Okay, Tom Mix, John Wayne, George Foreman, a lot of guys went there. Very interesting. Right in Texas. Um, Shud Brothers, S H U D D E. Okay, then uh, my favorite here so far, Del Monaco Hatters. He's uh, within a short train drive of me. Uh, he's in New Haven, Connecticut. Del, Mon Del Monaco is 1908. Um, very nice people. They say 85% of their sales are online now. Okay. Uh, 13 pages of hats produced exclusively for Del Monaco's. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, they even have some special stats and hats, colors and stuff they make just for, you know. Uh, all right. 1909 Standard Hat Works in Waco, Texas. All right. Very interesting. Cameron Mortis. Cameron Morris, a Waco native. Okay. Num okay. After that, 1909. 1911, J.J. Hat Center. Let's read a little bit about that. Uh, J.J.'s is something of a paradise for hat guys and the women who love them and thanks. To one of the store's most knowledgeable salesmen, Kevin Todd Gerber, JJ is featured in nearly a thousand instructional YouTube videos. Ah, look at that. Okay, um, 1911, Peters Brothers hats. Okay, in Fort, Fort Worth, Texas. There's a lot of them in Texas. I'm going to assume these are some of the best places to get, um, come on, Western hats probably in the world. Okay, we already talked about Standard Hat Works in Waco, Texas. Peter's Brothers Hat Works is in Fort Worth, Texas from 1911. Okay, then you've got the Hat Store in Houston. So you've got a Fort Worth, a Houston, and a Waco on this list. 1915, the Hat Store. It's about 108 years old or so. Right, let's go back. Uh, San Antonio, Texas is next. 1917, Paris Hatters. Okay, it's a Texas institution, they say. Uh, Johnny Cash, B.B. King, Bob Dylan, Tommy Lee Jones, a king, a pope, and four American presidents went there. Uh, it says the place hasn't changed. They still have a hand-cranked 1930s cash register. Not as old as the Alamo, but definitely worth a visit. This sounds really cool. San Antonio, all right. 1917, Paris Hatters. 1918, Paul's Hat Works in San Francisco. All right, right by Golden Gate Park. Okay, that sounds like it's right by the Haight Street and stuff. Then you've got Jaime's Haberdashery in the St. Paul, Minnesota from 1921. All right, uh, Cornerstone in St. Paul. And 1927, Texas Hatters, another Texas, a custom hat shop from 1927. Um, I want to talk about a few other things that some people have been asking me about. Hat making classes and workshops, all right? This guy tells you about it. There is a really nice one, San Francisco, Deanna Gibbons, the hat shop in San Francisco. Uh, the website, deannagibbons.com slash workshops. Okay, so it's a two-day on-site workshop. You learn to block a felt into a classic fedora or bowler. Okay, da, da, da. trimmings options, 
Uh, you'll learn to finish the hat with a grow grain ribbon and learn hand and sewing machine techniques. Workshop is appropriate for first time continuing students who like to learn more. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, here we go. Workshop space is only for students, but it's offered several times a year. Workshop fee includes all materials. Tiana Gibbons Hat Shop at the Hat Shop, San Francisco. Let's go all the way across the country to New York. East Village Hats. All right. New York City. EastVillageHats.com. It's, no, it's not. It's uh, EastVillageHats.nyc. Pardon me. EastVillageHats.nyc. Okay, make your own fedora with hatter store owner Juliana, Julia Knox. Okay, two half-day weekend classes. Day one, learn to block a classic fedora, pork pie, or Hamburg. Learn about various shapes and materials that could be used. Day two, learn to finish your trim and to shape and finish your hat's requirements. Basic hand sewing skills are must. Workshop fee, $295, includes materials. Very nice. Um, Havstad Hat Company. Okay, they don't say where they are. Oh, yeah, Oregon. Okay, there's one Havstad Hat Company in Oregon, HavstadHatCo.com, Northern California. TheHattery.com slash workshops. How many of you guys have been looking for custom cap makers? There are some guys out there. Um, Turnbull and Dunn in England, online only. Okay. Uh, clothing designer, graduate who makes 1920s and 30s inspired flat caps. He designs, makes the patterns, and sews the caps on a made to order basis. The caps measure 10 and a half to 12 inches across. You know what we're talking about. The big, wide, baggy flat caps that look as wide as a newsboy. Like the old pictures of the guys wearing those like suspenders and those big floppy uh, flat caps. Turnbull and Dunn. Okay, angling online only. Ten and a half to twelve inches across and are made from pure wool, knitted wool, wood tweed and Harris tweed or Yorkshire tweed. Um, let's see what else. Oh uh, boy, Australia online only. The well-dressed head. Golden age of men's caps was between 1910 and 1930. Australian cap designer Keith Labou is faithful to that period. He collects extraordinary fabrics from around the world, some antique, and pays homage to the historic examples of men's caps in photographs and collections. His online, online boutique is most unusual. Okay, it's highly regarded in the Fedora Lounge community and other hat groups. His caps receive high marks for fit, fabric, and constructions. Prices for mold, prices for eight panel button top newsboys range from one seventy nine to two seventy nine. Okay, there are. Let's talk about reenactors and living history headgear. Okay, I know there are guys out there who do western, um, you know, Civil War type stuff and western repros. I've seen some really incredible pictures. You guys holding, you know, you know shotguns and big mustaches and stuff. It's incredible. Um, blockade runner in Tennessee. Family owned and operated, established 1983, 5,000 5, feet of retail space. Wall to wall reenacting supplies and uniforms for Civil War and living historians. CSA officer kepis, tricorns, wide brim Army of Tennessee hats, 1840s Jim Bridger hats, top hats, wool slouch hats, and more. Blockaderunner.com. Okay? He is in Tennessee, War Trace, Tennessee. Wow, War Trace? Um, let's go to. Wow, okay. C and C Sutlery, Idaho. Sutlery, not cutlery. C and C Sutlery. Okay, uh, he's been supplying reenactors and living history enthusiasts with Civil War and Indian War clothing since 1976. Uh, the headwear is a widest array of federal and confederate kepis for enlisted and officers in the calvo cavalry, infantry, and artillery. For sharpshooters to other, headwear includes period, accurate slouch hat, slouch, and top hats. All right, there's so many more here. Dirty Billy's Hats in Pennsylvania, Gettysburg, come on. Hatter hat historian Bill Wickham has, Bill Wickham has recreated period accurate 
American historical headwear for more than 50 years. 50 years. Civil War buffs, movies, museums, historical sites. Okay, film credits include Dances with Wolves, Last Day of the Mohicans, 310 in Yuma. His hat making, okay, uh, Elizabethan age. Wow, and pre-colonial to World War II. Uh, Civil War headgear, that's his biggest customers. He got the Dirty dirty Billy name when uh, he started distressing his hats with dirt from Civil War battlefields. That is cool, right? All right, so he distresses them with actual dirt from Civil War battlefields that he collects. That's Dirty Billy. All right, Fall Creek Sutler in Indiana. 40 years plus, Civil War reenactors, museums, movie, cost, Victorian era buffs. Federal and CS Kepis forage caps for enlisted men and officers. They have slouch hats and period accurate top hats and derbies. Cavalry hat pins and acorn hat bands. I love those those acorn cords that go in the front. I used to have the nicest Charlie One Horse with acorn, gold acorn cords. It was amazing. And some guy offered me money to buy it off my head once and just gave me this incredible amount of money. He's like, I'll give you $500. And I was like, well, okay, because so I couldn't resist it. There are also sections showing you hat shops uh, internationally. Austria, Nomad Modern. Nomade Modern. And also Zazi. S Z A S Z I. Zazi. Uh, in Vienna. Canada, there's quite a lot. Henri Henri. Um, Bernskov, Ecuador, England, Christie's of London, Fox Brothers, Gamble and Gun, Herbert Johnson, Laird Hatters, oh, I'm surprised to see them, Locke and Company, Thomas Farthing, Turnbull and Dunn, Finland, Kimo Halmi Hats, France, Agave Road, Anthony Petto, there's a lot of them in France, Germany, Ed Vintage, this sounds really cool, I know I have a lot of people out there in Germany. Uh, YouTube, they have 12 unboxing videos. Right, in Germany, there's a place called advintage.de, okay? Advintage, just like advantage, but advantage. Uh, .de, Deutschland. Okay, um, uh, they span all four indie, indie films. They have the replicas of all of them. Wow, that's pretty cool. Rabbit Felt or Pure Beaver. Bashed or open crowns, so you could get a custom hat weathered or distressed for a few extra bucks. Budget Indies, the Harrison Ford model in Rabbit Fur 2 for 220. Italy. Super duper hats. Super duper, just like it sounds. One word, super duper hats. New Zealand, South Pacific Berets. Hmm. SouthPacificBerets.com. Very nice. Bass Berets. They make Nice bass, bass berets, and they sell them. Spain, Alejandro Mateo. Sweden, oh, we gotta get to Sweden, my favorite. Okay, Hofud hat makers, Hofud. Sweden is one of the world's leading exporters and among its most popular items are Volvo SUVs, vodka, smoked salmon, and 1930s inspired fedoras from hatter Michael Anderson. I hope I pronounced that correctly. His brand Hoffert began in 2017 and, and has won a wide international following for his hand-finished beaver felt and beaver hair blend dress hats. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys that are interested uh, from my uh, channel in Hoffert. I am also very interested in getting one. Um, prices begin at $300 US dollars for 30X beaver blend to $550 US dollars for pure beaver, that's pure beaver, 100x pure, I mean, pure beaver, 550. Uh, his level of customization is noteworthy. Clients are invited to choose brim width, brim edge finish, crown ribbon color and width, liner color, and crease styles. Prices include free shipping. Okay, free UPS shipping, classy shipping too. That is a really nice, uh, that's nice, you know, free shipping. Um, I have to say, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of these hat makers, and I haven't been really impressed with so many. Um, I really love this guy, and I can tell a lot of people on my channel are uh, 
are gravitating towards him too. Um, from what I hear, he, um, of course, he seems to specialize in, you know, the Maltese Falcon, and the Cagney, and the, uh, the Bogart styles, which are a little bit higher, you know, boxier crowns like Bogart wears and stuff, but it's not all he makes. He does also a more tapered lower crown too, um, you know, something like a Borsellino style if um, you don't like the more exaggerated uh, nostalgia style, nostalgic styles. Uh, it seems like he can do almost anything, and I would put my custom job in this fellow's hands over anybody else. You know? Maybe you're just going shopping at the, the shop next door or something, and you want to find a, you know, some Stetson or something. Look at all the color combinations. You could say, wow, this guy has got a, you know, a navy hat, but with gray trim, or, you know, here's a gray hat uh, with, a, instead of black trim, he's got navy, you know. So, Looking at custom hatters' pictures um, it sometimes inspires you and it gives you ideas of stuff that you might want to buy one day. I just want to tell you guys, uh, you still can order those hat stingers. Um, I've got a few coming uh, my way. Um, I'm going to be using a stinger hat brush pretty much. Uh, he makes hat brushes uh, out of uh, badger brushes, you know, natural badger hair, like uh, the real thing. They're nice, they're soft, but they're firm, and uh, I think he might offer a, uh, a synthetic option too. But uh, the badger is nice because not only does it uh, work well as a hat brush, it looks nice. It's a badger brush you stick in your hat, you know. So I'm going to get one of those hat stingers with the little blade that goes inside the band. And that way I could use that as an all-purpose tool for my, you know, hat steaming. It's my steamer is right over here, guys. And there it is. And we're going to be doing a lot of steaming videos very soon. And, uh, yeah, meaning me is going to steam right up here, I think. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks for everything. Wish care.